Being a member of the Bat family isn't always about fighting with your fists. In a city like Gotham, you have to be smart. Smart enough to know that no matter how hard you fight, some people you'll never save. Well, we'll have fun then, won't we? <laughs> Think quickly. He's coming. Gentlemen, the time has come once again to discuss things. Oh, it's Saturday night, yeah. I pray for the weekend on the weekend. Mama can't get it, got the remain. You want to go ahead and get into this shit? Yeah, let's get into this shit. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Geeky Gentlemen. I am Sid Part 2. Joining me today is the one and only Justin Cristelli. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Justin? I'm a little tired. Yeah, same, same. Anyway, uh, we're, we're not here to talk about how tired we are. We're here to talk about <laughs> another fan film. This is Batgirl Saturday Night in Gotham. Oh, uh, it's Saturday night. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, this is a, a follow-up to one of the first uh, fan films you and I reviewed uh, on w- once you came on, Manos, and that is uh, Batgirl Friday Night in Gotham. Um, how apt. Mm, I wonder what the third one will be called. Is Sunday Night in Gotham? Let's... Saturday Night in Gotham Part 2? It, it, it should be called Sunday Morning in Gotham, and uh... Batgirl's all fucked up and hungover. Yeah, yeah, I could see it. I could see it. Uh, yeah, so this was interesting. Uh, you know, the uh, creators saw our initial review, and uh, when they when they started getting this together, they're like, "Hey, we'd love it if you guys did a review of our this one too." I'm like, "Yeah, sure, fuck it, why not?" Um, so, Manos, uh, general thoughts. Uh, yeah, I really dug this one. Um, I knew I would because uh, it's the same team, and uh, it's got. Uh, more of the more of the stuff I liked in the previous one. It's got the really snappy dialogue. Uh, the acting is really good. Uh, the fight choreography is is very good. And this time around, they bring in, of course, Robin, uh, Riddler, and Mister Zaz, and we name drop uh, Amanda Waller, mm-hmm. and we uh, wisely keep Batman away uh, once once more. Yeah. That's yeah, just really, really good that they keep doing stuff like that. That's just good choices, you know? Correct. It does have more of a series feel than uh, the previous one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's kind of obvious because, you know, from what I understand, they're supposed to be trying to do a, a series of these. I don't know how many, but, uh, yeah, it definitely does have that episodic feel to it now. Yeah, and that's fine. And, and this kind of goes to something we were talking about last week with uh, fan project stuff. If you want to do a fan project, definitely go for it if you want to do a fan series that's cool you should start with a standalone first yeah um you should start with something that stands on its own so you can build an audience and build an interest because i feel like a lot of people start with a a one-off for a series like a pilot and then it doesn't get enough traction and people don't get as invested in it until long after it's been initially posted um so i just i feel like doing something that's more meant to be a standalone kind of thing and then leaves open the possibility for a series it's a much better way to go about it and this definitely does that and you know just it's, you can tell how refreshing and how much better that works yeah i, um, I would definitely agree uh they bring in some of the kind of batman tropes uh with the storyline um it definitely feels more like a batman-y you know, universe uh, mm-hmm. than the previous one. Um, but, you know, it, it never really forgot, like, who's the star on this one. Yeah, Batgirl definitely, like, takes up the whole screen uh, every time she's there, and she's there through most of it, so that's great. Uh, the the 
actress is still doing a really good job. I really love her, her portrayal of Barbara Gordon. Uh, just the casual leans, you know. Yeah. I got into Barbara Gordon uh, in the comics when she was Oracle. Mm-hmm. And the thing that always stuck with me about her is she always longed for, you know, the best time of her life as being Batgirl. And she was always very reminiscent of that. Um, and so just, like, to see this kind of, like, fun, uh, like, full-of-life character that's clearly enjoying what she's doing as portrayed in this fan film, it, I really get that kind of feeling uh, of that character of like Batgirl was Barbara Gordon's favorite era of her life. And mm-hmm. so it's, it's just really cool to see that. Uh, you know, like I've talked about this with the last one, I went and re listened to our review and, and these guys just kind of get some of the, the characterization, some of the voices for these characters that I really like. Um, and, and it just, I don't really know what they're thinking when they're writing it. But I know what I think about when I think of these characters, and they're kind of hitting that kind of voice for me. So it's really working very well for me, if nothing else. I would re- easily agree with that, yes. Because uh, Barbara, out of the main back characters, is the one with the least kind of back baggage. The one, you know, the one that has, like, you know, the least, like, uh, brooding. Uh, which makes her more of a fun character. And... You know, she's got a little bit more attitude, and I, I don't think it blocks a lot of her vision, I think. Because uh, some of the characters that... And this is kind of typical of, like, brooding uh, characters. They can easily uh, not see the forest for the trees because they're so pissed off about Mom getting shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, she doesn't really have that. Yeah, no, like, Batgirl... Um... You know, her typical origin is she usually starts to get into it because something's going wrong for Jim Gordon. But yeah. then she stays with it because it's super fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, it just, it's one of those few people who, in comics, one of those few characters who uh, doesn't have the tragic backstory. And that's yeah. really enjoyable. And of course that came later with the Oracle stuff. And, and it works as a different commentary at that point. But just as... As for her career as Batgirl, I think it, it's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, I was really excited to see Riddler in this. Riddler is a character who does not appear in a lot of fan films I've watched. Um, he does not get utilized nearly as much in fan films as I feel he should be. Which is weird. You know, he's so popular, uh, especially with fans. Mm-hmm. There's a couple uh, good ones. Like uh, Batman Puppet Master is a really good Riddler uh, centric fan film um, that's very much in the Nolan style, but they're pretty far and few between. Yeah, isn't it funny how everyone bitches about how overused the Joker is? But who's the character everyone wants to use in their fan film? The Joker. The Joker, right? like constantly. Yeah. I've seen him killed <sighs> so much. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know, but somebody kills off the Joker to fan film. It's like, oh yeah, good job. I never saw that before. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's refreshing to see one of the other villains, like particularly one of the the main ones that get a little underused. I mean, it's it's weird because no one, even in the comics, Riddler lacks a, a consistent voice, right? Like, yeah, you can read a bunch of Joker comics and not know who they're written by, but they all write the Joker in such a similar way that you can believe that you could conceivably believe it's the same person writing him. Because the Joker's got a pretty well-defined voice by this point in comics. Uh, It's changed over the years, but, you know, since the 80s on, Joker's pretty, you know, evil, violent kind of character in comics. Sociopath, murder. Um, Riddler's all over the damn place. Sometimes he's (laughs) pathetic, sometimes he's a cunning mastermind, sometimes he's something in between. This definitely goes with more of a mastermind, but they're trying to treat him like pathetic, and so that's really enjoyable. Um, this has nothing to do with anything but uh, DC Superhero Girls and uh, the Batgirl vs. Riddler prelude to the wedding. Both yeah. paired uh, Batgirl up against the Riddler and did a dynamic wherein he has a crush on her. Yep. Yeah. And I really, really like that dynamic, and I'm hoping that these guys stumbled onto it as well. 
There's not enough in here to really necessitate that that's happening. I'm just kind of like holding out hope that's what happens because something about that dynamic really works for me. And I think it'd be cool to see here because I really like this Riddler. Uh, the guy doing Riddler here, I thought, did a really good job. I love the... I love the sound of his voice. Uh, he enunciates so much. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's just, uh, you can tell he loves the sound of his voice. It's really, really <laughs> great, uh, great attention to detail in the delivery of the lines. Yeah, um, I found him kind of playing the role. I, I enjoyed, let me just say, I, in, I enjoyed his performance. Uh, he, it was very exact uh, in what you said about uh, enunciated uh, was quite on the mark. Um, it's almost foppish in a way, uh, mm -hmm. but understated. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like that line, like uh, almost going over the top, but you know, holding back a little bit, which I think is a good idea. Uh, because with live action Riddlers, we tend to get a lot of the uh, Frank Gorshin, Jim Carrey versions. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's nice to pull that back. My particular favorite takes on Riddler are, uh, yeah, the animated series with John Glover. Uh, I thought that was just such a cool Riddler. And I was a big fan of Paul Dini's run uh, when Riddler was trying to be a good guy. Oh, when he was a PI? Yeah, that was, when he was a PI. Was good stuff. God, I love that. Because he um, was, he was, he was a good guy. Not because he had some change of, you know, character or anything like that. He realized, oh wait, maybe I could get less beat up and thrown in jail and still show everyone up if I do it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was still sketchy. He was still himself, but he was still trying to prove himself by being a good good guy. I just, I don't know. I love the philosophy of that. No, I agree. I liked that. Um, and Riddler's one of those characters who, again, he's, he's so uh, such an open book because all he really has to define him is a gimmick, right? So you can do a lot with him. Uh, so I quite like their, their portrayal of Riddler here. Um, I'm a little more middle of the road on exactly how he was written. Um, the thing with Riddler is... I think the reason that he's not used nearly as much as other characters in Batman's rogues gallery is because you got to think of riddles for him to be sane, right? Uh, yeah, it's a bitch. It's... Yeah, right? And so the, there's kind of like two ways to do it. One, you go buy a book of riddles or go online and look up riddles, and, and then you can uh, just, you know, craft those to your story. And that's what, like, uh, Batman Earth 1 Volume 2 did, uh, because I'd heard all those riddles before. Um, or you can try to actually create a riddle, which is much harder than, uh, than people give it credit for. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say I've never heard any of the riddles that they used here. Uh, that doesn't mean that they don't already exist online, and I didn't have the time to go research them. Um, but I, I generally liked the riddles they used. It's just so a matter of, like, I don't see how you could make the connection that he's trying to get across. Yeah. Like, the answer to the first riddle is A... As an aerosol. I'm like, yeah, but it could also literally be anything else that starts with A. <laughs> and so that's that's a little bit on the weaker side. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas if you had some kind of, you know, where the answer was poison or the answer was aerosol, you know, that, that could work a bit better. And it might require more more legwork to, to find the, the way to get a riddle across like that. The second riddle they had him do, though, where the answer was Zaz that felt specifically written for this and it felt like a very natural conclusion to draw from it. Yeah. Um, that one I liked quite a bit more. There's a uh, tendency, I've, I've noticed writers in either comics uh, or film have, have pulled this trick with the Riddler. I've seen this a few times where like uh, the riddles are lame on purpose mm -hmm. and I often feel like that's a cheat by the writers. <laughs> so <laughs> they don't have to come up with a clever... Uh, riddle, so they just in universe go. Oh, it's a, it's a shitty riddle on purpose because uh, it goes into his plan. Uh, it's not because I didn't take, you know, the time to come up with a good riddle. No, no, that's fair. <laughs> I've seen uh. no, I've seen that before. I've seen comic writers do that. I've seen uh, people in film and TV do that. Like, eh, okay, all right. Um, I know I would probably do that. <laughs> 
It is or, harder uh, than you'd think. Uh, definitely yeah. to, to like create those are, are, are really difficult because, I don't know, I feel like people come about them in the wrong way or something. Um, I am but, shitty at riddles, by the way. I fucking love riddles. They're super I am fun. absolutely terrible. If I was in a life and death situation where I had to solve a riddle, everybody would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I'm too fucking dumb to like... Ant- come up with the even more simplest riddle oh, answer man. uh i'm just really bad at it oh, oh so so riddler is like your your most feared batman villain then huh i would just shoot him <laughs> <laughs> oh fair enough um so yeah that that side of it i i had like a little bit more of a negative side uh a little mixed i was mixed on let me put it that way um I thought the look for him was really cool. Uh, I like that they didn't go for like the the question mark suit jacket. It's it's just a little too overplayed now. The Riddler can be modernized. Just put him in green. It looks fine. Yeah, Give him that's one thing. question mark. It's fine. Um, you I don't favor, need to overplay yeah, it. I I tend to favor the simple maybe single question mark on the tie mm-hmm. or lapel or something like that. He didn't even have that. Uh, although he did like uh, draw on a posted note. Mm-hmm. I could question mark for no reason, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, I did like that. Uh, the suit was really nice, actually. I really did enjoy it. Yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed the suit. It was... <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Uh, the the costume design in, in this was pretty good for everyone. I will say, I, I might as well use this time to transition to my biggest negative on the thing. Uh, Robin, just... I very little about robin worked for me um okay i didn't care for the actor uh he was really really flat uh compared to everyone else that that had a speaking role in this film and the last one um the costume i thought was was just not very good um and like the fight choreography choreography from robin was pretty good so i feel like he was probably someone cast more because he could fight well on screen than he could for acting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I did not care for for uh, Robin's acting. Um, yeah, the mask, I think, for me, stood out the, uh, the most as far as, like, uh, issues I had with the, the costume. Um, you could kind of, like, you know, squint and not really worry so much about the rest of the costume. The mask, I don't know. The ma- That kind of mask is kind of hard to do. Uh, sometimes in live action, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of take them for granted in comics and cartoons. But man, you got to put that shit on and get in fights and do all sorts of stuff and act and like it. It, it, it it's hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I I feel like uh, I guess my performance, uh, my problem with this uh, performance was uh, I, w- I I think you mentioned it. I think he came off maybe a little bit stiffer. Mm-hmm. Uh, the voice. Uh, his voice was really maybe a little bit more deeper than I'm accustomed to hearing for Robbins. Uh, I assume this is Dick Grayson. No, it says specifically it's Tim Drake. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe, I think that casting is off then, because I didn't even think about Tim Drake. I, I totally thought he was he was uh, Dick Grayson. Yeah, the, the only thing that tipped me as Tim Drake before the credits was the fact that he used a bow staff. Um, which has yeah, kind of well, been more Tim Drake's signature, and and uh, Dick's kind of always retroactively been using the batons. Um, I've been noticing like uh, older DC characters have been stealing from their legacy characters, hmm. so it's like, oh yeah, Dick has the bow staff now. So oh uh, yeah, well. yeah, I guess that's in uh, what Titans for DC streaming. You're right. Um, yeah, I mean Dick has the bow staff in that. Yeah, like, you're I mean, right. You're right. Look, Barry stole Wally's personality. So, I mean, <laughs> the so you know, shade. The, the shade. Yeah. Um, so anything can happen. So uh, his, well, that case, I don't know. Like he looks older than Tim usually is. Yeah, now, and now that you tell me he's Tim, I don't know. I guess maybe his delivery, I think, maybe feels a little bit more correct because I thought he was Dick the whole time. Oh, um, so I guess that I might feel a little bit more like Tim then. That um, might be. A, I think Tim, Tim's still more more lighthearted than that. He is a bit more smart ale- alecky. Oh, uh, 
Let's see. Yeah, I, I don't. It's it's a yeah, hard dude. call. I just don't yeah. feel like he gets enough to do, or just generally, I don't th- feel like the actor does enough with what he's given. Uh, I suppose so. Yeah. Know, we talked a lot last time when we were talking about Friday Night. We talked about the uh, the villain actor who just has a handful of lines but really delivers them really really well and and does a lot when he's not talking um the guy playing tim drake here just un does not feel like an actor to me he feels like someone who's cast for his fighting and that's totally understandable because i do think the fight choreography in this again was really really stellar work uh yeah some of the stunt work was really really cool but i just yeah i was watching tim and i didn't feel that he pulled it off uh that's just uh, what what I kind of came down on with him. Um, I agree with that. Though let's let's go ahead and, and talk about the fight choreography though, because this one like really ramped up uh, compared to last time. Um, yeah, I love some of the the thought put into this stuff because, all right, like I weigh one hundred and twenty pounds. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm I'm very skinny, and I'll see a lot of like things that don't really think this through, even and especially possibly superhero stuff where someone my size or or like someone who's who's clearly not like super buff will just like throw someone, and mm-hmm. I'm like no that's you, there's just a uh, like a fact of mass here. You just you only have so much mass as, as far as strength goes. So like hurting someone or throwing them or, or kicking them. It's all about like mass and velocity put together. So you can only do so much with velocity if you're like a smaller person. So like, I like some of the thought that was put into the choreography here. Like when Barbara uh, is fighting that, the guy that had the batons and she like basically crawls and, and flips her way all the way around this dude's body in order to throw him off balance so she can throw him. Yeah, I thought that was a really, really cool bit of choreography and it worked really well. And it just, it feels right out of a damn comic. Um, mm-hmm. I've seen panels and stuff like that. It feels so genuinely right out of comics. Yeah, and everything felt natural. I mean, you know, we talked about this before. I've seen some bad choreography in uh, fan films. And the choreography in these two films we've seen so far is just top notch. It looks it looks super perfect professional um mm-hmm. and I, like, that's the that, that's the thing that really stood out like when she flipped on top of him and got her legs around his, his uh, head and just bashing him like yeah that's um, that was that's the, really the good other shit one. see that yeah, the, the that other grapple yeah, i was like yeah that grapple i was a little more iffy on um just because like okay the the idea of doing that what you got to think about when we're talking mm-hmm. fight choreography what you got to think about is the person that she's like doing that to has to be supporting both his weight and hers. Yeah. And so like, there's definitely a disadvantage to dropping to the ground. Uh, if you're in the middle of a fight and someone's on top of you, that's definitely something you don't want to do. So I could see someone trying to support the weight, but Mm -hmm. that's not, that's something that's usually more typical to like Hollywood stuff and not something that's, more genuine to a fight, which is fine because this is obviously not trying to be super realistic or anything, but mm-hmm. it's just something you generally more see. So I don't know. It would have been cool to see that uh, kind of trope played with a little bit more directly, like to either have him fall down to the ground or depending on like how desperate you want to make the, the action scene uh, to have him go forward with her because then that move backfires on her. So, like, there's just things to think about with choreography like that. And, you know, if you're just doing it because it looks impressive, which it certainly does, that's fine. But if you want to, like, think about more realistic or, or more um, intense fight choreography, those are things to, to consider. Mm-hmm. I had a good laugh with the baton guy, though. Because, yeah. like, he comes out of nowhere and starts, Aah! like, you know, if you just shut up and attack them. <laughs> you might have had a better shot. Fair enough. I don't know. I, I kind of get the like idea. I laugh, like I've watched the episode uh, a couple times. And it, it was kind of like practice out a little bit. Like, man, you should. You're your your own worst enemy. Fair enough. Fair enough. I don't the know. That, hit them. Yeah. I don't know. I can see an argument for it, but it's not really worth getting into. Um. No, that's. But by the way, that's a pro. I like that. Okay. Okay. Um. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I, I I enjoyed that. 
Okay. Well, uh, what else? What else do we want to talk about here? Um, we get to Mr. Zaz. Oh, sure. Go for it. Okay. Um, I don't think I cared for the look of Mr. Zaz. Um, I have a. Let's see. I like the way he was introduced through a through a riddle uh, and that build up. Although the way he kind of just appears is a little bit. Um, I don't know. It's a little bit um, kind convenient. Of, yeah, it's convenient Well, he's just standing there. And, like, I don't know, the, the entrance could have been a little bit more dramatic. Mm-hmm. Um, and they went with, I don't know if it's fair to call this the Christopher Nolan look for Mr. Zaz. Um, um, the one that reminds I, me the most of is the Arkham City, Arkham Asylum games. Um, yeah, because I forgot where he started looking like this. I can't remember if it was Batman Begins or Kevin Smith or the Arkham games. I don't remember who started this look first for him and i don't like this look what what Um, look do you prefer because everything i think of for zaz uh going back to like no man's land he's pretty much been bald has all the the cuts like the the thing that changes for zaz is where the artist is putting the cuts i am a big fan of his original uh last arkham look uh where he is very dapper uh he's blonde he has hair um and he looks like i don't know like a like a very dapper uh steve rogers type um and he's in a full suit he has a top hat and he's uh looks like he's going to go out on the town he kills somebody and then he takes his clothes off and he's got all the scars uh and he has a very smug superior attitude and the last 10 15 years he's completely changed to this uh, this like I don't know this naked bald thug with a knife and um, I don't particularly like that version of Mr. Zaz and I keep hoping the the original version by Alan Grant comes back someday um, that's fair you, um, I've know, never every seen every time it. I see him it's like yay Mr. Zaz like oh yeah that's right Mr. Zaz I've um, literally never seen him any other way than bald with the with the whole thing going for him. Um, so oh, that's dude. interesting. I got a, I don't know. I if you can find, I know it's in trade. Uh, I don't don't know if it's available anymore. It's uh, I think it's called the Last Arkham from Alan Grant and Norm Brayfogle, and it's his, his first story. Okay, yeah, I've got and, that, and I've never had the chance to read it. Oh um, yeah, that's his first one. He. Uh, he appears the first few times like this, and then somewhere down the line, I can't remember who did it first, who turned him into, I don't know, whatever that is. And okay. uh, I don't, it's more effective to me. It's always been more effective because he has this kind of, this, this, um, sterile, you know, uh, pompous, like classy, like aristocratic look, and he has this horrible dark side uh, to him. And. Yeah. and it, I don't know. It's always been more effective and creepy to me. No, that's totally fair. Like, I, I, for me, as someone who's... a ruling naked guy. Yeah, for me, as someone who's always seen Zaz, is like, you know, he doesn't wear clothes because that way he doesn't have to wait to add the cut. Um, he's, he's just someone who lives to kill, who's like a fucking shark, basically. Um, yeah. I thought this, this portrayed Zaz very effectively. I thought this is what most people think of when they think of Zaz, and I think it works. Um, and it's just, ah, oh, he's, he's immediately creepy, immediately intimidating. Um, Zaz, the guy, like, he's one of the few Batman villains who doesn't fucking talk. Just every time he goes at you, he's going for the kill. Mm-hmm. And that's really, really scary and intimidating. So the way he just kind of, you know, appears on screen is, is pretty cool. Uh, you know, right out of a, a slasher flick kind of thing. So that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I quite like their their version of Zaz that they got going here. Yeah, Mr. Zaz was more like American Psycho than Jason. Okay, that's fair. Um, that's that's a a fair way to look at how it's changed over the years, but that certainly makes this interpretation just as valid, though. Oh yeah, I mean I'm not yeah I'm not saying that. It's just because uh, yeah, this has been primarily the most popular version. I mean. You, you haven't even seen the original version, for God's sakes. Yeah, I know. It's weird. I never um, knew that anyone had, like, because, I mean, I've read some older stuff. Zaz was induced, introduced in, like, either late 80s, early 90s, and I've 
I've read back as far as like you know, um, No Man's Land a little bit before that during Dixon's era and all that stuff, and I'd never mm-hmm. seen Zaz any other way. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. Um, all right, we want to talk about anything else? We want to go ahead and go on to ratings. Uh, I don't know. I think that was kind of it. Uh, I don't know if I had anything else like uh, really jumped out at me. Um, yeah, I was I was really happy with this. I'm obviously I'm subscribed, so I can't wait to see more of this. <laughs> um, yes, they do a really really stellar production, so that's really cool, and and it's it's just exciting to see where it goes. Obviously, we had more negative to say here, but that's not like a reflection of it getting worse or anything. It's the fact that it's longer. There's more to talk about. There's um, more being done here on a story level than in the last one. So. As more content comes, there's more to criticize. So obviously, not meant to be taken as like, oh, this one's a total drop in quality. No, really consistent level of quality here. Um, really enjoyable. Yeah. All right. Uh, why don't you go ahead and go on to ratings first, Manos? Well, yeah. I like I said, I have a lot of love for this. I thought uh, you know the pacing was great. It's sharply written as usual. Uh, most of the acting is uh, quite good and. Uh, it still has its. It, it still looks wonderful. Uh, I'm gonna give this uh, four and a half uh, posted notes with question marks out of five. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much right there with you. I'm gonna go down just a little bit lower, um, just you know, as room for improvement kind of thing. And I'll go ahead and give this four out of five uh, bow staffs. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Manos, you know what I forgot to do? No, what? I forgot to look up uh, a fan film to discuss. I gotta go do that real quick. Oh man, you should have did. You should have do what I do every week and just look as I'm talking <laughs> and pretend I had it the whole time. Oh, the whole time. Oh, uh, hold on. Yes, that's an interesting yeah. idea, there, Ian. <laughs> uh, hold on. Oh man. Uh, um... Oh yeah, Jurassic Park. <laughs> doing that. I usually put more thought into these, and, but I got like a, a list of ones that I, I just keep around. Like, oh, we could talk about that sometime. Um, all right, you know what? We've never done a fan film. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save that. I, I lied. I lied. Stop lying! I, I don't want to stop lying. I want to <laughs> lie to you just constantly. Who um, are you really, Ian? Oh, uh, well, you are see. Are you Sid? <laughs> are you part? <laughs> You know, something drives me crazy is when I'm talking to people and online and they type, hey, Sid Part. I'm like, no, no, d- don't. Uh-huh. You can call me Sid. You can call me Sid Part 2. Don't call me Sid Part. That's stupid. <laughs> 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 oh, man. All right. All right. All right. I got something. Uh, okay. This is going to be a really, really short one at three minutes. So we're going to it's going to be a fun Ooh. week. Uh, we're going to talk about Orion, a fan short film. Uh, it's a bum, bum, bum. 3D animated uh, DC Comics New Gods short film. So should uh, should be a good time. should be a challenge to get around half an hour out of three minutes. So everyone hey, tune in to see how that goes. I have a suggestion. Uh, there's been a Miss Marvel one I've been thinking about doing, but it's five minutes. Do you want to maybe double up? Yeah, we can do that if, uh, if we run out of content. We'll see where we are like ten minutes into the episode or something. Okay, if if we're cool, we'll save Miss Marvel for another uh, week. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. All right, everyone, thanks very much for watching. Until next time, I'm the philosopher, and I'm the realist, and we are your geeky gentlemen, and we will be discussing things.